I think we, I think we all knew in the back of our minds, even though we feigned this whole line of like, there probably aren't any really bad unintended consequences. I think in the back, deep, deep recesses of our minds, we, we kind of knew something bad could happen. But I think the way we defined it was not like this. It literally is a point now where I think we have created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. That is truly where we are. And I would encourage all of you as the future leaders of the world to really internalize how important this is. If you feed the beast, that beast will destroy you. If you push back on it, we have a chance to control it and rein it in. And it is a point in time where people need to hard break from some of these tools and the things that you rely on. The short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. No civil discourse, no cooperation, misinformation, mistruth. And it's not an American problem. This is not about Russian ads. This is a global problem. So we are in a really bad state of affairs right now, in my opinion. It is, it is eroding the core foundations of how people behave by and between each other. Um, and I don't have a good solution. You know, my solution is I just don't use these tools anymore. I haven't for years. It's created huge tension with my friends, huge tensions in my social circles. Um, if you look at like, you know, my Facebook feed, I probably haven't, I've posted maybe two times in seven years, three times, five times, it's like just, it's less than 10. Um, and it's weird, I guess I kind of just innately didn't want to get programmed. And so I just turned, tuned it out, but I didn't confront it. And now to see what's happening, it's really, it really, it really bums me out. Like think about, like there were these examples where, um, there was a hoax in WhatsApp where um, in some like village in India, um, people were like afraid that their kids were gonna get kidnapped, et cetera. And then there were these lynchings that happened as a result where people were like vigilante running around. They think they found the person and they, I mean, I mean, seriously? Like that's what we're dealing with. You know, Im imagine like when you take that to the extreme where, you know, bad actors can now manipulate large swaths of people to do anything you want. It's just a, it's a really, really bad state of affairs. And we compound the problem, right? We curate our lives around this perceived sense of perfection because we get rewarded in these short-term signals, hearts, likes, thumbs up, and we conflate that with value and we conflate it with truth. And instead what it really is, is fake brittle popularity. That's short term and that leaves you even more, and admit it, vacant and empty before you did it. Because then it forces you into this vicious cycle where you're like, what's the next thing I need to do now? Because I need it back. Think about that compounded by two billion people. And then think about how people react then to the perceptions of others. It's just a, it's a really bad. It's really, really bad. It sounds like you're taking deep personal responsibility also in, in being a part of it. I kind of, look, I did, a, I, did what I, I did a great job there. And I think that business overwhelmingly does positive good in the world. Where I have decided to spend my time is to take the capital that they rewarded me with and now focus on the structural changes that I can control. I can't control that. I can control my decisions, which is I don't use this shit. Um, I can control my kids' decisions, which is they're not allowed to use this shit. <laughs> um, and then I can go focus on diabetes and education and climate change. And that's what I can do. But everybody else has to soul search a little bit more about what you're willing to do because your behaviors, you don't realize it, but you are being programmed. It was unintentional but now you gotta decide how much you're willing to give up, how much of your intellectual independence. And don't think, oh yeah, not me, I'm fucking genius, I'm at Stanford. You're probably the most likely to fucking fall for it. Because <laughs> you were fucking checkboxing your whole goddamn life. No offense, guys. <laughs>